Hi everyone and welcome to preview day at Michigan Tech. We are so excited to share our experiences with you all and thank you so much for being here. My name is Lindsay Johnston and I am a third year forestry major and I'm from West Branch, Michigan. Hi, my name is Carson Van Lannan and I am a fifth year chemical engineering major from Green Bay, Wisconsin. And hi, I am Austin McFarland. I am a first year computer engineering student from Detroit, Michigan. So here at Michigan Tech, there's not one set path. There's not one road to follow and there's not one set journey. Everybody here, especially the three of us, each have our own paths here at Michigan Tech. So here are our journeys. So me, my path started with me not even though I was gonna come here. I chose to come to Michigan Tech kinda at the last moment and it really came down to me wanting to expand my horizons and try new things. I didn't wanna stay stagnated in the same sort of community or the same sort of experiences I was you know, living. So I decided, pull the trigger, let's do it. <laughs> so I came up to Michigan Tech and I'm loving it ever since. So one really cool thing that Michigan Tech does is, is it has its orientation week, the full week before your first week of classes. So you go from orientation straight into classwork. Um, and they put you into groups based on your major. So I was an orientation team leader, or OTL, for two different years. And I got to lead a group of 16 to 20 first year chemical engineering students. We did a tour of campus. We went to different presentations by guest speakers. Um, and then I led group meetings on su topics such as technology, um, resources, or college life. Um, and this was a really good opportunity from first years to get to meet people from the majors, maybe form study groups, and fo form friends. When I first came to Michigan Tech, I had my heart set on becoming a veterinarian. But after my first semester and working at a veterinary office during the my first Thanksgiving break and also Christmas break, I decided that it was not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I spent the next couple weeks kind of being super lost and really confused and not really knowing where my path was gonna take me next. But then I sat down with my older sister and she mentioned that we had the College of Forest Resources up here, which I really didn't know at the time. But since I love being outdoors and I love hiking and backpacking, I thought that I might as well sit down with the academic advisor and see what any of those majors in that college are all about. And after I left her office, I was instantly hooked and knew that this was the next path that I wanted to take. So there's a lot of very cool clubs and organizations you can get involved with um, here at Michigan Tech. So we're just gonna highlight a few that we are involved in. Um, so I'm involved in Society of Women Engineers and I got involved my very first semester on ca campus. So Society of Women Engineers, or SWE for short, is a international professional development group. So you can start in your college career and then continue on when you get a full-time job and um, become a professional. And there's a lot of really cool, unique experiences. One thing I got to do was design, lead, and build a Winter Carnival all-nighter statue. So myself and my co-chair co Romana um, had to plan the statue based off of the theme and we had no idea what we were doing. We had never really built statues before, but we were able to work it out and get help from our other members and we made a pretty cool jukebox in my opinion. And then the other thing I got to do with SWE is go to the national conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania during my second year. So this is a conference for everybody all around the country to go from colleges to professionals. There's a lot of different professional development talks, so I went to uh, talk on um, meeting etiquette, one on like negotiating salaries, and one on um, breweries and how that relates to chemical engineering because that's what the speaker decided to do with her chemical engineering degree, which was very cool to learn about. Um, and there's also the largest career fair I've ever been to. It was huge. And there was a lot of companies from all across the country that I've never even heard of that were hiring, and that's actually how I found my first summer internship at BASF was through that career fair. If there is not a student organization on campus that you would like to join, but you want to create your own, you can also do that. So that's what my friends and I did this semester, is we created the student organization Sexual Assault and Violence Education, otherwise known as SAVE. So for this, we really just wanted to bring sexual assault and domestic violence awareness to our campus, along with other campuses across the country. So we started this out with Title IX, and we've done a whole bunch of different workshops with it. We've had guest speakers come in. So it's, a really great, it, it's been a really great experience to be able to start up our own student organization and kind of see where this is going to lead. 
So I know it can seem pretty intimidating as a first year especially to even want to get involved with campus, but what I did was I took the initiative and I joined Watts Hall Student Association, also known as WASA, and I became a Hall's president. And it was a very fun experience and it helped me build my characters as well and feel like part of the tech community. So it helped me put myself out there and it really helped me build myself into the leader I am in second semester. So there's a lot of very unique opportunities you can experience here at Michigan Tech that you might not be able to experience anywhere else. So one thing I got to do was cardboard boat races that we have during our homecoming week every year. Um, so different clubs and organizations build boats out of cardboard and duct tape and then race them in the portage. So they try to get around the white buoy and a lot of people sink, including us, though we did make it the furthest in our heat. Um, but there's some people who make it back and it's a really fun experience and everyone's cheering and laughing at the ones that fall in. And um, it's a really cool event we have during homecoming week. So hockey is something I never thought I would have liked at all, but it's something that really just excites you when you actually go to a hockey game as tech especially. You know, just feeling the vibe in the community and how excited everybody is about over the same thing. You know, it's really just incredible. Like, I started to actually like hockey even though I grew up in a basketball and football type house, but it was just amazing. Like, I just, I, it made me want to go out and learn the sport and I'm just like, so happy to see how excited and how passionate everybody was about the hockey game at Tech. Also here in our Keweenaw Peninsula, we have a really great mine history. So I have had the opportunity to go into many of the abandoned mines that we have up here. And I've gone with groups of my friends. We've been able to go in, see all the different equipment that has been abandoned there but also we have been able to actually find some little copper pieces that were still there. So kind of really great experience to go out and do and have fun. So skiing is something that none of us had tried before we got up here. And I know my first time skiing, I thought I was gonna hate it. I thought it was gonna be very unpleasant and I wasn't wrong, but it was something I was really glad I tried. It was something that was really fun and it kind of helped me put myself out there you know, like something I never thought I would have tried or never wanted to try. I took that initiative and I went out and did it. And I may not have liked it, but I'm still glad that I tried it. So I also had tried downhill skiing my first year of college. Wasn't for me either, but I also tried cross country skiing or Nordic skiing um, as a PE class here. And I had a lot of fun. We have amazing tech trails that can range from beginner trails all the way up to like advanced trails that are a little bit harder um, and you can learn how to cross-country ski is a lot harder in upper arms than I was anticipating, but it's a beautiful view and it's really nice activity to go do with friends. And with my first experience skiing, my friends did not give me the option to go on the bunny hill. So they took me right up to the very top of the hill, told me to keep my skis par parallel, don't cross them, and that I would be 100% fine. I was not 100% <laughs> fine going down at all. So when I started down, I got going really fast and I ended up going head over skis, both my skis fell off, and I ended up having to walk down the rest of the hill. So even though I had that kind of traumatic experience with my first time skiing, I still wanted to try it again. And I decided to take the beginning downhill skiing course that we have here at Michigan Tech and instantly just fell in love when I knew how to do it correctly. <laughs> And now I can even go down some of the intermediate trails without having to fall all the time. So we don't just do clubs, organizations, fun things. We also have to do academics. We're here at college trying to earn a degree to get a job. Um, so there's a lot of really good academic support to help you along the way. So at Michigan Tech, we have about 18 different learning centers. Some of them are kind of like the more generic ones like chemistry, physics, multi-literacy. And some of them are more specific for majors. So there's a chemical engineering one, electrical engineering one, computer forestry, you name it, there's probably a, a learning center for that department. One I utilized a lot was the chemistry learning center my first two years. So I came into college in university chemistry two because I tested out of one from AP Chem that I took my junior year of high school. So I was terrified, nervous I wasn't gonna be able to do it, nervous I wasn't gonna be 
remember everything I needed to. So I signed up for a group appointment at the chemistry learning center. Um, and I was with like five of the students and a student coach and we were able to work through difficult topics, do di homework together, anything I would struggling with or questions on, I could bring it up to the group and it, they helped me tremendously. So then m when I took organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two, I immediately signed up for group appointments to kind of help, help me keep on track and help me understand those difficult topics as they arose. And in the College of Forest Resources and Environmental Science, our learning center is Xi Sigma Pi. So that is our forestry national honor frater honors fraternity. And so my first two years when I was taking my forestry classes, I would go there all the time just to ask questions. If I had questions about any of the work or any of the labs, the students would even take me outside for some of the labs too if I just really wasn't understanding what was going on. But now that I am a third year student, I had the opportunity to join Xi Sigma Pi. So now I can start helping students like that I had students that helped me. And if you feel like it's not more academic support you need, but more support as a student overall, putting yourself in the right direction to get these resources that you need to succeed, that's what the Water Risk Center is here for. So the picture that you see on the screen is actually another mentorship program we have here at Tech called Husky Connect, where it focuses more on minority students and helping them get adjusted to campus and helping them feel like a part of the community. But the Water Risk Center overall has their own version of that called the Excel program where they take students in and they, um, they help the students get adjusted with the upperclassmen to Tech's campus. Um, it's usually a, a, a upperclassmen of the same major, but that's just one of the things that really helps students get adjusted. So also we are trying to build our resume on our path here at Michigan Tech. So one of the things that I have done to help build my resume is be a part of undergraduate research. So I was working on poplar biomass plantations for the past two summers. So I would go there and we would have undergraduate students and graduate students working with me and I would be in charge of it all. It was really daunting and I was super nervous being in charge of all these students and all of this research and all of this data. But now it has really helped me grow as a student and also as a person, which then led to my Montana research. So I went out with a graduate student for a couple days and we were looking at reforesting the Montana plains for wildlife habitat. So another thing you can do here at Michigan Tech is go on co-op. So if you would have asked me my very first year, I would have said absolutely not. I was adamant about not taking a co-op because you take a semester off of school, so you basically delay your graduation. Um, however, as I started talking to company recruiters, um, a lot of them have offered co-ops before they offer internships. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna give this a shot. I had talked to Kimberly Clark a bunch, and so the spring of 2017 career fair, I went to talk to them and I got a co-op for spring of 2018, so a full year later where I was doing product development um, in baby and child care for the Huggies diaper brand, basically. So I did testing on materials, testing on um, different diaper properties, and did a lot of data analysis with that. So it was more research and development kind of focus, which I found out I wasn't a big fan of. I didn't like being at my desk or in a lab most of the time. So I wanted to try something different for my second co-op. So my second co-op, I got fall of 2017 for summer fall of 2018. Um, just the way my classes fall, I had to take two co-ops in a row. And so this one I did at Georgia Pacific in Green Bay as a process engineering um, process engineer in their um, mill. So I did chemical trials, um, did fiber blend testing, worked with operators to try to optimize the process, try to make it safer for them, and I loved it. I loved being in the mill, talking to the operators, trying to work out problems and figure out what can be approved, what can be safer, more efficient. Um, and one cool thing that Georgia Pacific does was send all of their co-ops and interns down to Atlanta for a week. So from all the mills across the countries, we all were put up in the Ritz-Carlton, which is very swanky, and we all felt very underdressed and should not have been there. But we were able to learn more about the company, learn more about the different uh, products that Georgia Pacific makes, learn about kind of the culture, and then be able to network with all of these amazing college students from all across the country. Um, it was a really cool experience, and before both of my co-ops, I had gone to uh, Career Services to get my resume reviewed and to do some mock interviews and kind of 
freshen up my interview skills to make sure I could nail my interviews. Mm -hmm. And because of that and of my co-ops, I decided to become a career services learning center coach so I could help other students with their resumes, cover letters, interview tips, prep, career fair prep, anything to help them advance their careers and get that internship. So I know as a first year, it can kind of seem intimidating trying to get experience and research experience and all this sort of stuff because it's like you want to be able to compete in the job market as well. You want to be able to market yourself and all that. So the pictures that you see on screen now, these are pictures from my first days of college. These are my move-in days. This is when I'm getting settled into my dorm, you know, just trying to adjust. And the adjusting wasn't the easiest part. You know, during the first semester of college, I kind of felt isolated from campus. It was kind of harder for me to put myself out there because I did take the leap and try a new experience, and I was so happy I did. But just that initial trying to get over my fears and trying to overcome all that, it was very hard for me. But now, this our next semester, I'm going to be a resident assistant. That's somebody who works with the, the, hall, um, the dorm halls and helps build a sense of community and make sure that everything is going right in the hall. And from that, I never thought I would have been in the position that I am today. But it's just a persistent work ethic and making sure that you're putting yourself out there. And now moving forward on my path, I have accepted an internship this summer in Atlanta, Georgia, where I will be working with HNTB, which is a civil engineering firm, and I will be doing environmental planning work for them. So this is ultimately what I would love to do for the rest of my life as of right now, but now having the opportunity to actually go and experience what a job like this might entail, I'm really happy that I'll be able to have this opportunity. Um, so because I let my path deviate from my initial plan and went on co-op, I got to work for Georgia Pacific. So this past summer, I worked with them in their corporate um, division, doing process engineering in the other mills. So I got to travel for that job, which was very cool. And come August, I was given a full-time job offer for when I graduate. So I went into my senior year knowing I already have a job in place for when I graduate in May. I start in June. I'm very excited. And without taking that leap and going on co-op and delaying my graduation a year, I never would have had this experience. And I probably wouldn't, be, wouldn't have had a job set up before even starting my senior year. So I, could on, I only had to focus on my senior classes, which has been amazing. So this all couldn't have been done by itself. There are people who have impacted our personal roles, our personal journeys, and have made us stronger and have really pushed us to achieve great things. So here are these people. So my, pe my first person is Paul Charlesworth. He's at, um, a professor for chemistry. He's my professor this semester for uh, University Chemistry One. And he just took chemistry in a way for a computer engineer to see and just made it fun for me. Like he made it in a way where I was actually wanting to go to lectures and having fun in class. Um, there's Susan Liebau, the director of the Water Center, my boss next year. And she's also the director for my org, um, Society of African American Men, Sam for short. And she really just makes sure that she's there for me. She, I know at the end of the day she has my back, no matter what, thick and thin, she's there for me. And then Jean Watts, she is positivity incarnate. <laughs> There's nobody more positive on this earth than her. And I know that if I ever come to her with a problem, she'll sit there and listen and help me work through it. So, yeah. So these are the people who have impacted me. The first one is Katie Toy, who's a chemical engineering academic advisor. So I've been to her office every semester to make sure I was taking the right classes, the right credit load. I wasn't overlooked. Um, loading myself or overwhelming myself with some of our more difficult classes. She's been huge in making sure I was on the right path, especially when I went on co-op. She's the one who told me I'd have to take a second co-op, which I'm very glad I did. And she's just been there for me every step of the way. The next one is Aaron Berg, who is the engineering manager at Georgia Pacific. So he's a Michigan Tech alumna from um, chemical engineering, so he understands the workload and he understands uh, Michigan Tech culture and everything that that entails. And he was been he was my he was my manager the very first co-op, and so he gave me amazing projects and really trusted me with some um, big work. And he was always there for me for any problems or issues I had. 
And the last one is Gina Collins. She is a professor in chemical engineering, and I've had her for three classes now. She has a teaching style that I really like, and she does a lot of examples and really will stop and work through an example again if someone has any issues. Um, I can also go to her office at any time and know she'll be able to help me, and she really cares about her students, which I uh, appreciate. And these are my people. So the first one is Robert Frost. He, he, he has not only helped me grow professionally, but also personally. I have worked in his lab since my first year, so all of my research projects that I have done up until now have been up with him in, in his lab. The next person is Chris Miller. He is an instructor that I have had for a whole bunch of different classes that I've taken. And he and Stacy Cody also are kind of just my rock here at Michigan Tech. So if I ever need anything school-wise or personal-wise, I know that I can always go to either of them any time of the day or night. So it's always just nice to know that, I ha that they always have my back. And finally, Joe Cooper. If it, were, if it weren't for him, I probably would not be standing in front of you all today speaking to you. And I am forever grateful for him and what he has done for me since my first years being here. So as we end today, we want to pose a question to you. What will your path lead to here at Michigan Tech? As you can see, there's three different journeys up here on the stage today, but what will your path look like? What decisions will you make? What orgs will you join? What will you do? What type of friends will you make? You know, these are all questions to lead to your ultimate path here at Michigan Tech. So thank you so much for listening to us today.